Many years ago when I was working on my PhD, I had a crush on a girl in class. And one day after class, I was sitting on a chair out uh, in the hallway of the campus and I was jotting down some notes about some coins that I planned to trade. Uh, I, I used to flip coins a lot. I would buy coins from Pittsburgh and resell them in Rochester or vice versa. I would go on Craigslist looking to see what coins people would want to buy. And I was making a plan on what I was going to trade for what and what I would end up investing the proceeds into. And wouldn't you know it, the girl just comes up to me to talk to me. And I was worried she would look at the notes. She knew I collected coins, but she didn't know the extent of the coin collection. And you got to remember, at the time, I had just broken up with a girl who had taken advantage of me financially. So I didn't want her to see my financial life. Uh, but um, she was just really curious, looking down at what I was jotting away. And I had to change what I was writing and make it look like some other interesting math problem or something like that, as opposed to my financial statement. Three years ago, I was working at a startup company, and uh, if I remember correctly, we had about 20 to 30 employees. And one day, a, a new uh, uh, employee had joined, and he needed help setting up his computer. And so, uh, when he walked to my desk to ask me a question, he had on a ton of fragrances, to the point that it wasn't just that you could smell it, it was like the whole place was drowning in that. And so I stood up and continued to talk to him, and I'm backing away from where he was, and he, he keeps approaching me, and I backed up. See, I, my seat was about four cubicles down from where the window was, and I backed all the way to the window before I told him, excuse me, but I, I, I apologize, I, I, I'm very sensitive to fragrances. And... It's kind of funny because um, after I said that, he apologized and he promised to never put on the fragrance again. And he never did, to his credit. I think the problem was that he might have known that it was this fragrance. But he wanted it. He wanted to shift the blame onto me. See, if, if I have to speak up about that, now it becomes my problem as opposed to the fact that he put on so much fragrances. Right? That's, a, that, that's a very uh, subtle uh, workplace politics issue. Uh, I, I think it's kind of sneaky. Uh, but at the same time, had he just not done anything when I backed away six feet and kept it at that and we could finish our conversation, neither of us could, would have been embarrassed by either of that, right? Uh, I, I, I used to have this problem. I, I have, a, well, first of all, I have food allergies. I got to be careful about various milk products. If I get them on my skin, I have severe eczema. Fortunately, I haven't had a problem with that for many years. And I've learned the hard way that it is very difficult to nudge somebody to, 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 uh, to, to not get their food everywhere. You have to tell them outright, excuse me, I, I apologize for interrupting, but I have food allergies. Please try to keep your food neat. I have never managed to project that message without outright telling somebody, which is a shame because people ought to know to keep their food neat. Uh, fortunately, here in 2020, I've been able to avoid all of these problems, right? So it's been a silver lining. Thanks for watching.